everyone, welcome to Watch It Paint It. Today I'm going to be painting an orc from Arcadia Quest, so one of the first monsters we'll have done. As normal, I'll show you all the paints that I used during this tutorial at the start, and they will be found in the description below. So to begin with, I'll show you um, priming the models, so taking some blue tack and sticking them to a piece of scrap cardboard, as you can see, giving them enough space that I can spray some um, paint between them. And next I take them outside and I'm using uh, a light green pet spray by the army painter here. Any, any colour would really do, white would have been fine, but seeing as I'm painting the orcs primarily green and I've got a lot of green spray, I thought I'd use that. And then I'm on to the base coating. I'll be starting off using War Boss Green by Citadel. Uh, this is for the skin of the orc and I'm using my monster brush by the army painter. I thought it was quite fitting to use this brush as it is the first monster I'm doing here but also because he's considerably larger than any of the heroes I've painted so far so this brush will cover him um, quicker, quick, more quickly than the regiment brush and it's still accurate enough. You can see I'm only using the tip so I'm, I'm still getting good accuracy with the brush not that it really matters at this point, as I'll be painting every other part of the model after this part. Next up's the Leather Brown by the Army Painter from the Zombie Side set, and I'm still using the Monster Brush here. And I'm going to start by painting his sash, this colour, so all the way around his waist. I'll be trying to get both the top and the bottom of the sash as well to give him the best 3D look he can. I'm also going for his boots here. As you can see, I'm, I'm trying not to catch the, the rope that runs through it, but it will be painted over afterwards. But obviously, the more layers of paint, the, the more detail you will lose. So try and be careful to dodge it as much as you can. I'm also catching the handles of his uh, axes in this colour. And next, it's Valio's Gory Red. And this is for his um, gloves, his gauntlets, and the tips of his... Um, axe handles and his single shoulder pad. Uh, you can see I'm not being particularly careful here, I'm still using the monster brush and at this point it is quite large so feel free to drop down to a smaller brush but knowing that I'm going to be painting over all the surrounding bits anyway I wasn't too fussed. The next base colour is charred brown, it's dark brown by Valio. This is for his uh, dangle cloth and his furs round his but and over the top of his shoulder, as well as the the bands on his um, on his gauntlet and his wristband there. So that's over the top of his shoulder with the furs. And next, I'll just go over the band on his um, gauntlet, as you can see just there. There's a couple of straps on his um, shoulder strap, which you might want to do in that colour too. Next, I'm using Claymore Blade by the Army Painter. This is the light silver. So I'm doing the bottom of the axe um, as well as around his his gauntlet, uh, all of the little um, rivets in his his gauntlet, and the, and the other side of the bottom of the axe and the other side of this bottom of the axe. It feels a little bit weird that the underside of his axe, in the drawing at least, is is lighter than the outside. It feels like the opposite way around to me. But I'll be using machine gun metal, which is the darker of the two silvers I have, to then do the outside of the axe, and I'm going to do the tips of his spikes with, with this as well which I'll highlight up later with a lighter colour. Getting both sides of his axe, all the little points as you can see there and the outside of his um, shoulder armour. It's a very important part of your body to protect that single shoulder. Next I'm going to use the dead black and this is to, to paint in his hair. So I've switched down to a regiment brush now and I'm being a little more careful as as you can see I'm near his skin and the uh, his hair bobble that I've already painted so I don't want to mess that up and just giving his little beard a touch of black as well. Next I'm going to tag in Benson to do some highlighting for me as I was quite pushed for time this week and he's using terracotta as well as a dry brush just to lighten up all of his um, furs there and next he goes on to the leather brown leather brown by valio and he's going to use that to highlight the leather brown by uh, army painter so you can see the difference in in the two companies choice for the same named paint but the the, the two complement each other quite well he's going to be using desert yellow 
to do the third and final highlight for the shoes. I switched down to a detail brush here to be more accurate. And you can see he's just making those shoes look fairly 3D. Actually, you can see that as well as I can. It's coming along nicely. He's going to be using a little bit of zombie shader. You don't often see Benson using shade, but on the shoes and around the um, the rope, it adds quite a lot of depth to, to the, that part of the model. He's going to continue highlighting the sash with the leather brown by Valio. You can see that's becoming more and more 3D with every stroke. Doing a lot of depth to that item. Along the top of all the uh, folds in the fabric and those three sort of strands, uh, stitches. A good place to highlight up there. Still using the detail brush, just applying small layers one at a time until you build up the look and feel that you want. He's going to be taking some gory red next and a tiny bit of bloody red, which is a the lighter one by Valio, mixing those two together, probably starting 50 50 percent, I'd uh, estimate. And he's going to highlight the outside of the red parts of his gauntlet as well as around his armour, the red part of his armour at least, trying to catch all the highlighted bits. There's quite a lot of um, sort of dimples and dints in the armour, so leave those shaded as best you can. And don't forget to highlight the tips of the, the hammer head there, uh, axe head even. And he's going to be using leather brown again to highlight, this is the zombie sides leather brown, to highlight the charred brown that we did the base coat with. And he's catching all the, the edges of all those charred brown parts. Next, he's going to be using Bone White by Valio. This is to paint in his teeth, which we'd previously painted over in with charred brown. That's to, to sort of give it the, the look of the inside of his mouth and his sort of dirty teeth. Uh, also, he's going to paint the skulls in, in this colour as well. And but the ropes around his shoes, hopefully you can see that, painting in each individual sort of... Um, wrap of the rope I guess and he's going to use the zombie shader again here just a small amount to paint in the eyes for the skulls and enforce the, the lines within the rope and enforce the darkness around his teeth as well sort of fading it down so it's brightest at the top of his teeth and shaded towards the bottom and he's going to use the brain matter beige as the final highlight to those colours and just add a little bit to the tips of his teeth and he's added it in his fingernails there just adding the highlight for the tips of all the spikes um, using Claymore Blade there. And he's going to be taking the machine gun metal and mixing in some dead black to make a darker silver than we own. And this is to darken up the, the outside of that axe blade as it sort of shows you in the, the picture of the model. And so hopefully you can see here the sort of colour we were going for, a, a very, very dark silver. And then making it quite watery and applying it to the outside of the axe, just trying to keep in in look and feel with the, the actual picture for the model for use in the game. As you can see there, we're going back to Brain Matter Beige now and using the dry brush, just applying a very, very small amount to all of his hair there, trying to get each individual strand to sort of stand out and look quite 3D. Next, we're going to be mixing the highlight colours for his skin, which is taking the War Boss green and mixing in some zombie skin by the Army Painter there. Uh, we would recommend you use the Snarskip, Snip, Snarsnip green from uh, Citadel, but we didn't have it with us, so we had to make our own <laughs> for this tutorial, unfortunately. But it worked pretty well by the end, as hopefully you'll see. But save yourself some time, and if you've got that paint, use that paint. So you can see he's using the Regiment brush here and applying it to all of the um, exposed areas of his skin, so each individual muscle, fronts of his legs, his fingers, his, his form, his cheek, his chin, his, cheek, yeah, his cheekbones and his eyebrow bones, the tips of his ears, again all the muscles on his back there, as well as his other arm and the back of his head, so that, that one's quite a generous uh, highlight, just leave all of the crevices shaded um, with the original uh, base colour. And next he'll have mixed in some more zombie skin to lighten it up and applying the next layer and um, applying it less generously. So making sure to leave 
some of the first highlight around the edges. I find this more central to each of the parts you've just done. So you can hopefully see, catching all the same areas again. Here he's just applying some survivor shader to the um, the axes which he just painted before and the axe handles. He did want to apologise that he was very, very tired when he was doing this, so he was a bit all over the place. Next he's using bright bronze and this is from Valio to paint in his uh, nose ring, his earrings and those studs on his gloves. He's going to be using Valio's gold yellow, uh, using the detail brush here again to paint in his eyeballs. He's turning the model to make it easier to reach each side and he's going to apply a highlight to his eyes using the moon yellow, just a little dab where the light would hit more in the middle. And next is dead black, just to paint in his two pupils there. And just touching them up. And then I'm back, so big up Benson if you can in the comments and uh, thumbs up below. He really does appreciate some loving. And so I'm back doing my usual Arcadia Quest uh, basing using the Mo <laughs> Mournfang Brown and the Regiment Brush. Just applying that as the base to the base. Base to the base. And then my second step for the base is agrile and earth as generously and thickly as I can, careful around the boots, and then let that dry and crack so it looks like desert. Next is a step we've not done before, and we weren't entirely happy with the skin, so we went and purchased a glaze from Citadel, Waywatcher Green. The idea with the glaze is that it will blend the highlightings in, in better for us, which we weren't happy with. I mean, we did mix the colour ourselves and maybe we went too extreme in the step up for the highlights, but the glaze has corrected all that for us. So let us know in the comments below if you'd like to see some more monsters or what you might like to see next. Also, do big up Benson if you did enjoy this tutorial. Thumbs up and comments, always appreciated. And come and show me what you've been doing on uh, social media. Thanks for watching.